We hope you enjoyed this teaching from Christchurch Birmingham. More teaching can be found at www.christchurchbirmingham.org. It's good to be in your midst, and um, I want to thank um, the leadership of um, CCB, honored um, Steve and Joe, and the pastorates for the opportunity to bring God's word to every one of you. Um, I don't take this for, for granted. It's a rare privilege, you know, to be able to serve in God's, in God's house. Thank you. And um, so we'll just go straight to the um, nitty-gritty of the day. So um, I'd like for us to pray. Father, Lord, I thank you and I bless your holy name. Thank you because it is you that we serve. Thank you that you are our Father. And it's all about you. This season represents you. It represents all that you are. The entrance of your word, give it light and understanding to the simple. Lord, I ask that every heart is ready to receive your word. In your precious name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. So, um, I realized something that God has been speaking to us repeatedly this morning. And that is God with us. Yes. God with us. Um, it's not a cliche that that word, you know, has been resounding. And it centers around what I've been talking about this morning, which is the Christmas story. Um, there are so many um, narrative about the Christmas story. But first, um, let's look at the scriptures. Next slide, please. Yeah, um, our text is taken from Matthew 2, verse 1 to 12, and I read, After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be, who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. Then, Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way and the star they had seen in the east, went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped, and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures 
and presented him with gift of gold and of frankincense and of myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. Praise God. Yeah. Um, this is such a, a remarkable um, story about the Magi. And I, I realized something that as believers, the gospel or the, the birth of Jesus did not come to us unannounced. It's something that was prophesied by different prophets of old, prophets like Isaiah, prophets like Micah, uh, prophets like um, Jeremiah, so many people it was foretold. And it was actually um, the coming of Christ was promised before um, the foundations of the world. You know, that happened in Genesis 3, verse 15. You know, how that God said that he was going to... The next slide, please. God said that he was going to put enmity between... Um, that was uh, when man sinned against the serpent and the, the woman, that her, she, would, she would crush the head of the serpent and the serpent would, um, you know, bruise a heel. You know, so that, that, was, that was symbolic of what was going to happen in the future. So fast forward into um, Genesis 15, verse 5. You know, um, Abraham, our father, father of faith, that we all are a blessing under, um, God called him out, so took him outside of the night, and he said, look at the stars. He said, look at the stars. And he looked at the stars. And when he, when he looked, he saw, God asked him to count. Uh, of course, he couldn't count. And but God said to him that these will be, you know, the number of children you're going to have. And the beauty of him just stepping out was stepping out in faith, knowing that God was with him. So, um, one beautiful thing that I realized about this is that it wasn't about him, but having trust in God, you know, and it was accounted for him as righteousness. It said, through your seed, through your seed, the nations of the earth will be blessed. So the seed he was actually talking about is Christ. Hallelujah. So um, I realize that historians um, are trying to paint a different narrative about the birth of Jesus, you know, and there are a few gospels that do not. Um, subscribe to this idea. Yeah. This idea of school of thoughts and chronology because they are not bio, the Gospels are not biographies or autobiographies or history of Jesus. They are not meant to be so. Um, they are meant to be gospel tracts that is targeted towards an audience or a group of people. Um, targeted audience or a group of people um, to bring the message of Christ. So you will see that the, the, likes of, um, the likes of Mark, Luke, and Matthew, they had vivid accounts of the... They were the ones that actually recorded the birth of Jesus. And you will notice that Mark, he, he had an audience that he wrote to, which was the um, Romans. He wrote to them in Latin. Luke wrote to the Gentiles, 
why Matthew wrote to the Jews. So um, Luke writing to the Gentiles because he didn't ha- um, because um, he needed to explain a lot of uh, um, um, history. He used certain words to um, appeal to his audience, but Matthew. Speaking to his audience, he didn't need to do much of those um, introductions because it was the same uh, message. So um, let's take a look at um, Matthew 1, verse 23. You see that this is actually a quote. It's a quote from Isaiah 7, verse 4 which talks about the virgin birth. You know, that, that was um, what I was referring to in Genesis earlier. So you're seeing it coming to play many years after. So, and if you drop down to, from Matthew 2 to 5, you also see that is a quote from Micah 5 verse 2. So you see here that multiple prophecies are at play, you know, and... It's obvious that this, even though he met, um, he met a lot in the days of Isaiah, but nowadays it even means more to us. So you can link, you could link these prophecies from the Old Testament into the New Testament, what we have now. The, the scriptures are unique. Praise God. Yeah. The reason I believe the Bible is true, there are proof and there are evidences, not just one. You see it time and time again. God has a way of doing stuff. You know, and we've seen that before God does a thing, his, his way of doing stuff is usually that he will speak. You have witnesses, you have confirmation from more than one person. And um, that is very important. And I think that um, this has, um, you know, this is an intelligent and defensive, um, unique way that the, the scripture has predictive prophecies, you know, that are detailed, spe- um, detailed, specific, and precise uh, prediction over a period of 700 years before the birth of Christ. So it was, it was um, prophesied, so it didn't come to us unannounced. Praise God. So um, when we go back, when we look at the story of the Magi um, visiting Herod, you know, um, something came, you know, something struck my mind as I was going through um, this study. Um, Immediately, Herod heard that um, a a king was to be born, king of the Jews. He, he He was worried. He was troubled. So um, the, when, I, when I look it up, the Greek word for it was tarazo, meaning terrified. He was stirred up. He, was, he, 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 could, he couldn't keep up, you know. And um, who, if I may ask, who are the magi, you know? And there are so many um, wrong narratives about who the magi are. You know, some say there are three wise men. Is that true? Maybe because we're born into um, maybe culture or um, how we were raised as children. We were told that because I've heard when I was growing up, I was told that they were three wise men. But the Bible never said it, you know. Um, what does it say? These, the Magi, they, they, they were people who actually um, come from the East. Yeah, people... Uh, 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 a group of wise people, sage, you could call them counselors, um, 
um, people who were, of course, they were gifted. And an ex a good example, uh, a typical example for this would be Daniel, you know. Uh, if Daniel was still living in, in those days, yeah, because Daniel was acting in Babylon, you know, that was a lifestyle, you know. Um, these people, they are um, stargazers, or what do you call them, they, the night sky. That is, that's what they do. They read signs and, and they do all that. You know, so these were their duty. But the, the, word, the beauty of God's word, God speaking to us this morning about God with us. That was the word resounding. And, I, I, you know, it's so beautiful that it had to, there was a link, that word is a link to the message for today. And when I looked it up, the Greek word for God with us is epiphany. So epiphany is not just a word that was first revealed to believers or Christians. No, it was a word that resonated with strangers, foreigners, you know, um, regardless of the fact that they did not know him. It's not as if they believe in Christ. But what was God doing, you know? I'm sorry, I'm going to um, digress a bit. You know, when God called Abraham out in the night to look at the stars, there's nothing, I need you to know, there's nothing that happens to God unannounced. He knows everything. He knew. He knew that a time would come that people would study the stars. So that was why he took Abraham outside and said, look up to the stars. Because from here will come a time where people will trace the star. Because remember, Jesus is the bright and morning star. So every star you see out there in the sky has a name. It's numbered. God knows. Because as you are, you're special. You're peculiar to God. Your every strand of hair that leaves your hair is numbered. God knows. So I'm trying to paint that picture so that, you know, there's a balance, you know, in what, I, in what I'm saying. So, um, seeing this, that it didn't just start from, God with us did not start from um, us believers. It started from strangers. So, meaning what? It was um, an indication that God was opening an entrance for everyone in the world that the Savior will come to what save the people from their sin. Hallelujah. So, um, it's amazing. These, these um, words are actually powerful. What, what does another word, you know, this, for, um, for God with us, or you could call it epiphany, it is the manifestation of Christ to the Gentiles. You know, we were never part of um, the chosen people. We didn't come from Israel. But you could see in God's magnanimity, in God's um, benevolence to us, in God's openness to us, he created room for you and I, you know, to be beneficiaries, you know, of um, God being with us. And another thing is, is a moment of sudden and great revelation. Is is a moment of um, an awareness, something that you never knew was there. All of it, you just realize that it is there, you know. Um, so I put a few things down to note. One of the points or pointers to this um, message is that Christ is the Messiah, definite, the Messiah. And, and as I was going through, you see that God spoke to Joseph in a dream. God spoke to Joseph in a dream, even to the Magi, he spoke to them. In, he spoke to them through stars. So what does that mean? Taking into 
our lives now, God speaks to us in the language that we understand. God, he will find a way. Because many a time we think that we love God. You can't love God. You can't love him. He offered salvation. So because he authored salvation, he has given you the right. He has given you the ability, you know, to be able to. So what we are doing now is re- receiving God's love. It's, we are responding or is a response of God's love to us. So um, another key thing is that another uh, uh, the second point is Christ is the message. He is the word. He is the word. He is the message. Yeah? Just um, to summarize everything that has been said, his ministry, part of his ministry was to die. We, 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 we are glad about the, the birth of Jesus. We do not downplay the manger. Yeah? It's not a stinking place. It's not, a ba- it's not about a baby that was born, yes. You know, but if you look at the, even the gift that was presented to Jesus, yeah, gold, gold represents kingship, royalty, authority, yeah. Um, frankincense, yeah, you know, it had to do with an embalming oil. Yeah, that was going to be used for his death. It's, it's very symbolic. You know, it had to do with his death burial. You know. And um, the last one, Meh, is a symbol of God as a deity. You know, but the beauty of God being a deity to us is that he is our father. We have a relationship with him. It's, God is not a myth. He's, he's not just one um, funny person or entity. No. He speaks to us. He talks to us. He loves us. Yeah. So, if you look at um, John 1 verse 1, in the beginning was the word. I believe in the incarnate word of God, the immaculate conception. In the beginning was the word, definite, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So you can't, you can't separate them. They are one. You know, the word fashioned you. The word created you. No wonder the scriptures will say, the great, all that God is, is housed in God. That is, is, all that God is, is housed in Christ. That was why Christ had to die, you know, to give us life eternal, life in abundance. Um, please, can we see John 1 verse 14? John 1 verse 14. Yeah. And the word became flesh and made his dwelling amongst us. Amazing. Exactly what um, my brother here, I'm oh, sorry, uh, the, exactly what you shared last week, you know, um, the message translation that God lives. In a neighborhood. What a beauty that would be. And we have seen his glory. The glory of the one and only son. Who came from the father. Full of grace and truth. Full of grace and truth. What could be more glorious than this? That Christ, 
He looked for everything. He went the extra mile. No wonder we, you hear songs like the reckless love. The reckless love of God is not saying that God is crazy or is reckless. No. He's trying to say that the way God loves is in many regards. That he goes, he can do anything for the one he loves. No wonder in Romans it says, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So this is, this is an open invitation to everyone that believes that God, God loves you. So even though the world is trying to paint, paint a different narrative of what Christmas is, we have been given the right to tell our stories better. They cannot tell the Christmas story more than us. Christmas is not about the Christmas tree. It is, it is way more than the Christmas I'm not saying it, you know, uh, Christmas tree is bad. No, I don't have anything. Even though sometimes people want to say it's very funny things about being a pagan festival. No, Christian, you know, Christmas is way more than that. But we have a more reassured grace that what Christ died for us. That we can no longer rely on our strength to do anything. Christ has done it all. He was made sin. Who knew no sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So God knew that there is no amount of trying that you would do. You will not be able to amount to anything. So he decided to put, you know, to re reduce or take, take away the burden of you. Praise God. And the final scriptures will be Isaiah um, 9. Isaiah 9, um, verse 6. Yeah, Isaiah 9, verse 6. Thank you. For all to us, a child is born. Unto us, a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders. And his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God. Everlasting Father and the Prince of Peace. We have the Prince of Peace among us. God loves his children. God loves everyone, but God loves his children dearly. God will do anything for his children. God kills for his children, and we are his. We are his children. He loves us. So um, I just thought to um, share this, and I'm sure that you know, it resonates with your spirit. Praise God.